the beginnings of Richter's Atlas if we now consider how the works of artists of the post-war period, and Richter's Atlas in particular, positioned themselves with regard to these photographic legacies of the historical avant-garde's, we can easily recognize that Richter's collection of found amateur photographs combined with journalistic and advertising photography inverts the utopian aspirations of the avant-garde on every level. If some of the Soviet and Weimar practices and the organizations had defined photography in a teleological perspective as a cultural project of enactment and empowerment, of articulation and self-determination, from the very outset Richter contemplates the reigning social uses of photography and their potential artistic functions with an attitude of profound skepticism. If the agitational and emancipatory dimension of photomontage had originated in a desire for the radical transformation of hierarchical class relations and of the structures that determine authorship and production, Richter's Atlas seems to consider photography and its various practices as a system of ideological domination, more precisely, as one of the instruments with which collective enemy, amnesia, and repression are socially inscribed. After his transition from East to West Germany in 1961, Richter started, started this collection of photographic images whose ultimate purpose at least initially seems to have been unclear even to him. toch wel vrij regelmatig voorgekomen dat ik gewoon met een pasje op mijn werk kwam en dan zit daar een bewaker en die zag dus zag mij gewoon met een pasje zoals iedereen daar naar binnen gaan en daarna vroeg van ja uh, wat komt u eigenlijk doen of mag ik even in uw tas kijken en dat, dat is toch een vrij uh, aparte ervaring als je gewoon denkt naar je werk toe te gaan uh, en ja ik heb natuurlijk ook vaak de, de ervaring gehad dat je in een gezelschap met mensen ergens aankomt en die andere mensen zijn nou ja, allemaal uh, uh, Hollandse mensen en die lopen allemaal naar binnen toe en als ik ook naar binnen, nou, met de rest naar binnen wil lopen, dat aan mij opeens wordt gevraagd van wat komt u hier doen? De phrase used by Richter to describe his predicament, uh, or perhaps his purpose, both as a person, as an individual, and as an artist. We're not told who these people are. There is a sense that it's the relationship where he'll be tried for war crimes. And in many ways, it's a, a classic Richter painting. Can I help you? And that zijn well, iedereen met wie ik was begon dan te lachen. Uh, en ik ja, begon dan ook wel te lachen. Because we have this distinctive blurring technique which is caused by the paint, when still wet, being dragged. by a dry brush. And Richter tells us what this is about. He's not creating a photograph. Maar het is, het is eigenlijk is dat niet zo grappig. En dat, dat zijn allemaal dingen die misschien ja, lijken alsof het niet heel erg is of alsof, alsof ik paranoïde ben. Maar dat het maakt toch op een bepaalde manier uh, ja, maakt het heel erg duidelijk. Nou ja, zij zijn dit. En ik was in de veronderstelling dat ik dat ook was. Maar Kennelijk blijkt uit de praktijk dat het dus niet zo is. Je bent toch net iets, iets anders. Of the original paintings. When it was first exhibited in Venice, it was shown in a single line, in a horizontal. Organized so that they seem to converge. They move in from left and right into the center, and Kafka is at the center. But it's also interesting in terms of who isn't. There are no figures to, to do with commerce or business. There are many other omissions. So the work seems to pose questions about what kind of people, what kind of figures comprise 
culture. woman reading a letter by a window, which Richter knew from his days in Dresden at the Old Masters Gallery. As in so many of these paintings of Richter, he revisits it and recreates it, but in this case, basing it on his own photograph of Sabina. But He started in the Atlas we encounter the most important example of this anti-positivist tendency around 1927, in a monumental project that sets out to gather identifiable forms of collective memory. The Mnemosyne Atlas was first conceived by the art historian Abai Warburg in 1925 after his release from Ludwig Binswanger's psychiatric clinic in 1924, it was actively developed in 1928 and he continued it until his death in 1929. Even though the scholar had to leave the project behind in an unfinished state, more than 60 panels with over 1,000 photographs had been assembled by Warburg. According to his aspirations as recorded in his diaries, the Mnemosyne Atlas was to construct a model of the mnemonic in which Western European humanist thought would once more, 
perhaps for the last time, recognize its origins and trace its latent continuities into the present, ranging spatially across the confines of European humanist culture and situating itself temporally within the parameters of European history from classical antiquity to the present. While collective social memory, according to Warburg, could be traced through the various layers of cultural transmission, his primary focus being the transformation of dynamograms transferred from classical antiquity to Renaissance painting, the reoccurring motifs of gesture and bodily expression that he had identified in his notorious term pathos formulas, Warburg more specifically argued that his attempt to construct collective historical memory would focus on the inextricable link between the mnemonic and the traumatic. Soon thereafter, in a crucial text from 1931, Walter Benjamin's short history of photography, the scope of the term atlas is once again strangely modified for the purposes of contemporary needs, in an almost ominous prognosis of the needs of the future, when Benjamin discusses August Sanders' Antlitz der Zeit, 1929, the key work of the German Neue Sacklichkeit photographer, as a Neubungsatlas. Eerily anticipating that only a few years later physiognomic observation would not only serve as the pretext to political discrimination but more brutally as the pseudoscientific legitimation of racist persecution, this exercise manual, as Benjamin optimistically claims, will educate its viewers in the physiognomic study of the relationships between the class identity of the depicted sitters and their political and ideological affiliations in the imminent future. Benjamin states, work like Sanders could overnight assume unlooked-for topicality. Sudden shifts of power such as are now overdue in our society can make the ability to read facial types a matter of vital importance. Whether one is of the left or right, one will have to get used to being looked at in terms of one's provenance. And one will have to look at others in the same way. Sanders' work is more than a picture book. It is a training manual Ubung's atlas, literally an atlas of exercise. Thus, in the unpublished introduction to his Mnemosyne Atlas he wrote that it is in the area of orgiastic mass seizure that one should look for the mint that stamps the expression of extreme emotional paroxysm on the memory with such intensity that the encryptions of that experience of suffering live on, an inheritance preserved in the memory point for while this introduction to the project retrospectively reads like an uncanny prognosis of the imminent future of social behavior, Warburg evidently. Hope to construct even if for the last time. Je wordt altijd uitgepikt in de rij. Mensen denken altijd, waar kom je echt vandaan? Ja. Die, die vraag werd je vaak gesteld. Ja. Heb je dat zelf zo ervaren? Ja, uh, nou ja, met name toen ik iets... Ik denk dat dat voor veel jongetjes geldt... Uh, die zwart haar of, of erger nog een, een, een zwarte huid hebben... dan, dan is, is het nog erger. Dat je, als je klein bent, ben je gewoon een, een schattig uh, een klein jongetje. Maar als je 15 of 16 wordt, word je, verander je zeg maar, voor sommige mensen... in een soort bedreigende verschijning. Hoe iemand je aankijkt of hoe, hoe iemands lichaamtaal is, dat, dat zijn allemaal, ja, als je dat een aantal keren hebt meegemaakt, ga je daar allemaal dingen uit, uit afleiden die andere mensen waarschijnlijk niet zouden zien, maar die je, of, of dat nou alleen zich in je hoofd afspeelt of dat het echt zo is, maar die je in ieder geval de hele dag doorkrijgt, is signalen van als je over straat loopt of je in de publieke ruimte begeeft van ik hoor hierbij, maar ze maken me ook duidelijk dat ik er niet helemaal bij hoor. En dat, dat gevoel herken ik, uh, uh, ja, dat herken ik ook. Uh.
Nee, in de maatschappij zag ik, uh, vroeger had je zeg maar een, een, een rang- en een standenmaatschappij. Daarna kwam erbij dat financiën gingen nee, ging bepalen hoe, wie, wie hiërarchisch waar staat. En dat er nu, nu een, een nieuw aspect is. Uh, Wat blanken die te veel met zwaard erom gaat. Je neemt alle slechte gewoontes over. Uh, in de, de rangen en standen van de maatschappij. Dus wie het gelukt is om beroemd te worden en, en wie niet.